Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Peter Towers, Managing Director of ESS BizTools. Welcome to this podcast. I'm joined today by Andrew Geddes, a well-known Australian accounting industry uh, consultant and the past chairman of Green Cross Limited. How are you today, Andrew? Very well, thank you, Peter. That's good. Andrew, we're at the beginning, or oh, we knew we one month into it, of course, of a new financial year. And um, it's a year that's going to be very interesting. We've had a change of government. We've got uh, inflation uh, on the rise. Uh, we've got high interest rates. Uh, we've got uh, the COVID-19 uh, problem back with us. Uh, hospitals the great are resignation. <laughs> great resignations. We've yep. got the, um, the ComBank Accounting Market Pulse report that come out at the end mm. of May which uh, talked about a number of issues affecting accountants, but in particular qualified that the biggest single problem was um, uh, attraction of staff and retention of staff. Yes. And today agreed. you and I uh, particip or participated in a webinar um, that was presented by the Academy of CPAs, uh, Certified uh, Predictive Accountants in conjunction with Plan Guru. And uh, we had two very interesting uh, American uh, presenters, Adam Hale, who's a American CPA and the principal of a uh, firm based in uh, Central America. Indiana, and, Summit CPA. Right, mm -hmm. Summit CPA. And Christian Wheelage, who's the CEO of Plan Guru, a major uh, producer of uh, budgeting and cash flow forecasting software. Adam Hale in particular had some interesting comments about the journey that his firm has been on over the last 20 years from a startup to a major firm providing virtual chief financial officer services to clients. What did you think about his message as it relates to the Australian accounting industry? Well, he's talking about a new business model, Peter, and I think it's going to revolutionize uh, the sector globally. Um, Let's talk about what it was based around. It's uh, run via the internet for a start. Uh, you can go to his website. Uh, clients um, have a choice basically of three things. The first is uh, business advisory, but it's around budgeting, financial forecasting, they call it. So um, if you want some help looking at, let's not just create a budget, but let's look at what drives the business and what are the key performance indicators that will indicate we're successful or not, and establishing some pipeline type indicators. Um, that's the starting point. Establishing budgets that they call financial forecasting. And you can, you've got a choice of uh, light, medium, or heavy, and the price is 20, 30, or 50 grand, depending on that. You can then tick a box that's your back office accounting. They'll help you with your payroll, your um, paying your bills, uh, dealing, helping you prepare and send out invoices. So they can, they, in Australia, we have firms offering bookkeeping and doing this separately and they're under price pressure. He offers this as a way of uh, creating a better, in, a better internal management information system and, and we'll do the back end if you want us, tick the box, and that way we can do our financial forecasting. And the third part is then we can do the compliance. We can fill in all the government forms and deal with that. So um, you go online, you have an, an hour's interview via Zoom. Um, you, you get walked through uh, a get to know you session where the advisors ask you about your business and what you're looking for. And it's the customer who ticks those boxes. Um, they then have uh, an onboarding process where they get to know the business and they help them improve uh, their bookkeeping. What they do use is the business process optimization applications that link into uh, QuickBooks predominantly online over there or zero uh, here or MYOB. So um, they're helping clients get into the cloud and integrate their uh, reporting, their data capture and processing and reporting so that they can produce real time management information. Now, um, the advisor meets, they call themselves guides, we'll, we'll work with you. So once mm. they've established an overall budget and they've established 
um, weekly KPIs, they then meet again via Zoom for an hour with the client and ask questions around the actual results, what's happening, what have you done, and they become part of that advisory process. So they're using budgeting and target setting and optimization of the client's bookkeeping and other uh, management information apps to create that type of relationship. And they'll do, you know, the back office accounting and or the compliance tax return stuff is a byproduct that, that if you want to do it yourself, you can, or you've got employees that do it, or we'll do it for you. Yeah. Um, it's really interesting. He's got uh, team members, 60 of them. They're located all around the US, wherever. They're not mm -hmm. in an office. Um, they're tired of compliance work. So they get trained in how to, you know, there's a senior accountant, junior accountant working together on clients. So there's a career path. Um, you get paid a base, then you get paid on the number of clients that you look after. And hopefully you get referrals from those clients and you win new ones so that you do get an opportunity to earn more. So there's some incentivization built into it as well. Um, the, the firm at the moment turns over about 10 million. The average fee is 80,000. They've got clients from 40 to 200,000 um, from around 5 million turnover and up. So they're small business clients. So it was uh, fascinating. It's taken them about 10 years to put it all together. Um, but with the help of Plan Guru and some of the training that you're going to do, uh, I think it's a path utilizing our core skill of financial forecasting, budgeting, um, to create an online offering. Uh, it's highly automated. They've used robots and some programming to link the business process optimization apps. You know, um, if tradies are using, um, doing tendering and winning jobs that way, and then, you know, their expenses, they're reading them uh, as they pay them. It's, it's really where technology has taken us uh, in terms of potential. And here's a firm that's put it together and they've you know, done it over 10 years. They've grown to 10 million. They employ 60 people um, and they got one administrator involved with that team. It's um, a new business model. Uh, I think it's going to uh, revolutionize accounting. Yes, and uh, the interesting thing, we also had Christian Wheelage, the CEO of the yeah, CEO of um, Clean Guru. He described uh, Adam Hale as the rock star of the USA accounting industry. So he got a big billing, and uh, I think he produced very well, didn't he? In the in the webinar, uh, I could have listened oh, yes. to him for another hour. Yes, and, very very uh, practical, and he talked about what they have achieved and how they operate. So it wasn't what they're going to do. It's what they do do. Hmm. And one of the other interesting comments that was made, uh, Andrew, uh, and this is very much in the um, of great interest, I would have thought, to our accounting firm partners listening, is that, um, uh, and, and this firm has just completed a merger, and they got paid in the merger calculations three to four times more than what they would have if they were just a compliance practice in the USA, three to four well, times. Well, they're, they're an online business. Um, they're fully automated. Uh, they've got people working uh, remotely. They don't have them in an office um, and they've attracted them and they're retaining them. So of course, they're uh, because of those characteristics, they're getting multiples of round 10 rather than four hmm. of maintainable profits. Um, the, the thing that interested me is a client comes, a client goes to their website and then uh, says, yes, I would like to interact with someone. And they have an hour to two hour Zoom meeting where they're interviewed about their business. And the advisor then says, well, on that menu of services, there's light, medium, heavy for advisory financial forecasting. Then there's back office accounting. Do you want us to do your payroll? your invoicing, et cetera. Then there's compliance tax and other government forms that have to be filled in. So in that first hour to two hours, you tick what you might want. Uh, and then the project manager, the senior accountant sends out a, a um, product order the same day based on the client's response. Uh, and then they sign a 
uh, direct bank transfer. They call it an automatic clearinghouse transfer, but they get paid weekly based on, they estimate what, you know, the fee might be 100 grand divided by 52 and weekly that money comes in automatically. This accounting firm has no work in progress or debtors. The client can say, I've had enough and give them four weeks notice and the relationship is terminated. So it's easy for a small business client to go online and have an hour's chat and go, this is what we'd like. Give us a quote that comes same day, bang. The, there's an onboarding fee, but it means that the first eight weeks payment are doubled and that's it. While the advisor gets to know you and helps you establish the budgets and the financial forecasts and the KPIs. So it puts control in the hands of the small business person. I was interested when Adam said, look, a lot of the clients are saying, well, I'm, I'm going to pay two, three times what I used to. And he says, well, that's it. Take it or leave it. What do you think? And they're saying, well, um, I think I'm going to get the value here that I want. So I'll, because I can turn it off in a month, if it's not there, I'll give it a go. And he said, most of them don't turn it off. And they're happy to pay two to three times what they used to pay. Very interesting, isn't it? Uh, when you look at uh, some comments that I'm sure you, you've heard, I've heard them. Oh, the clients won't pay for this. Uh, uh, this way, it's been tested. He's put it to the market and the market's accepting it because uh, they can see the, the value add that they're getting from it. So it's, well, it's uh, the sort of relationship that they're after. Um, I find it interesting that uh, here in Australia, I look after a number of professional service firms, all of them quite big in the five to $10 million range. Um, and they're paying me to be a financial forecaster. We analyze the business, we establish budgets, and we break it down into what we've got to invoice each week. And then we break it down into how do we get that work in terms of the marketing that we do, be it via a website and clicks, or be it via um, a tender product order or a point of sale process. So um, it's interesting that the people who engage me have separate public accountants who do their compliance work, but those accountants aren't doing what I do. Adam Hale's model incorporates what I do, and that's the starting point. Hmm. At the top end advisory, set the financial um, targets and, and the weekly, the things we've got to do, and then measure and think about how do we do them better. And the debate and analysis and conversations around that is where the value is perceived by the small business clients. Yes, so uh, uh, we will have more on this um, next week, Andrew, the, um, uh, on, the, on the 4th of August, I should say. Um, that's yes, the, at 11.30 a.m. Thursday, the 4th of August, 11.30 a.m. AEST. Paul Barnaby, um, who's a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountants and the Australasian representative for Plan Guru and consulting on predictive accounting, and myself are going to run a information webinar. Uh, to be honest, we were going to conduct it today as part of the one hour webinar, but we had a session with uh, Adam Hale a week ago and realized what a wealth of uh, information he was and yes. uh, realized that he was quite happy to discuss his business with us. So we, uh, we uh, quickly reorganized what we were proposing to do because we believe that uh, Australian accountants would be very interesting in hearing uh, this gentleman who has done this. He's implemented this. He's, it wasn't forward planning he was talking about. It was for the clients, but for his business, he's, uh, he's done it. He's created we, the new business model, Peter. Yeah. And, and put, uh, he's, put control, he's put control into the hands of the clients in terms of what are you looking for? Start with financial prediction and the other back office and um, compliance work. If you want us to do it, we will. But if you don't, you don't have to. It's your choice. And it's very different. We were uh, also joined by Christian Wailage from um, um, Plain Guru. He's the CEO of Plain Guru. Uh, in talking about budgets, he made an interesting comment. It's it's part artistic and part science. And yes. I, I, what he was getting at there is accountants can handle the science because we, we know if you're filling in a, a form on a computer where you've, it's, you've got to enter the figures and make sure it all balances. 
But accountants need to appreciate just what you're saying, talking with your various clients. I know, you, I know you've got about 12 of them that you're working with, 12 businesses. You've got to do some digging, haven't you? You've got to get out in the factory floor or out with the surveyors or out with the researchers and understand what they're doing. And that's a challenge for accountants, I think. I think we've all got to learn to get out of our suits and ties or whatever way you the watch the viewers of this program are currently sitting. And if you want to understand your clients, get out in their into their businesses for a few hours or a couple of days Ask and questions. understand the process. Ask questions. Yeah. Listen, Write it watch, down. learn. Yes. And as you get to know a sector, you can become more experienced in that sector. And that's another concept that Adam Hale talked about. Uh, rather than be a mile wide and an inch deep, let's be a mile deep. And um, so of his 60 advisors, they're now putting them into groups, specialising on in certain industries and gaining referrals as a result. And that's exactly my experience over the years that I've done the same. And uh, I now work with professional service firms, particularly engineers, surveyors, and some accountants. Uh, and that's what I want to do. It's uh, interesting, exciting. I know the sect as well. So again, um, part of attracting and retaining really good people is taking the emphasis from repetitive uh, compliance activities and moving it into improving your management information system by Im improving the accounting system by linking in the, the business process optimization apps and beginning to look at what are some of the predictive uh, activities items that we can start to measure and use to help improve the business. Is the marketing working? Um, are we more efficient? Um, and questions of that nature with your client, having gone out and visited them and looked at what they're doing and gaining some insight into it. That's, um, sorry, Peter, let me just try and get rid, rid of this. So um, yes, I thought it was really good in terms of the message about attracting and retaining good people. Um, and um, yes, very interesting. New because business it's, model. It's, it's interesting and challenging work, but it's yes. it's and it's able to be done really using what's up there. Uh, it's not yep. all driven by computers, and 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 that's really what um, Christian Wheelage was uh, referring to. I think when he said it's artistic and science in preparing yep. and the uh, the budgeting or the financial forecasting component is really the the start of all this. There's a lot of other things follow behind yeah. it. But that's the science. That's what Plan Guru does. It, and, and it's logically correct and mathematically correct. And you put numbers in it. And it does the p &L, It does the balance sheet. It's there. It's predictive. But um, the art side of it is getting to know an industry and getting to know your client's business and asking questions about what are you doing? What effect is that having? What are the outcomes? And if we do it differently, can we get better outcomes? And by having those conversations, we you're part of an advisory team that's learning about the things we do in a business can be measured and reviewed, and we can learn together. That's the art side of it. And it's not hard to do. All you got to do is ask and listen and watch and have an inquiring mind uh, and have those conversations. It's interesting that they're having weekly one-hour reviews of key performance indicators with their clients. A lot of them are not you know, measuring the past. It's about activity. You know, how many hits have you had on your website? How many have converted? Uh, how, many, how long have they spent on the site? Um, have we tried some... They really started initially with some of the digital marketing agencies that taught them about um, analysing um, digital activity based around websites and that has then driven them into creating this business model themselves that's right in fact on that he also made an interesting comment when they started using the internet they were one of the few american accounting firms doing so apparently his comment was most of their competitors were spending money or wasting money in uh, ads in uh, telephone directories yes and, uh, those directories probably don't exist anymore or <laughs> no they not don't much to them and yep. um, in the meantime, they become experts in um, search engine optimization and undoubtedly social media and other things to get their message across. Yes, they so were educators. Andrew, mm. Yeah. 
So, Andrew, do you see this as being a foundation from where, for, for targets, for strategies that Australian accountancy firms should be looking to establish? Yes. Well, if you want to get out of compliance and you still want to retain revenue, you've got to get more involved with your better clients. And the, what we've been taught to do is um, understand financials. So if we use a new tool that allows us to do predictive financial planning, um, budgeting is the old term for it, um, and then monitor the actuals with the client, it's a different relationship. You've just got to ask to be paid for that. So you might end up with fewer clients and a deeper relationship, which is exactly what's happened to me. Um, uh, the revenue I earn hasn't decreased, it's increased, but it's from a lot fewer clients. Hence, there's a lot less repetitive, uh, mindless work and a lot more intelligent um, analysis and personal interaction. So, um, you know, in terms of attracting and retaining good people, uh, it's a way of the future. Okay. Well, thank you very much for those comments. And just a reminder to everyone, our webinar next Thursday or Thursday, the 4th of August at 11.30 a.m. AEST is looking at the practical uh, review of implementing predictive accounting and how it blends in with the message we've received today from Adam Hale. To register for that webinar, please go to www.essbiztools.com.au. There is a registration form on our homepage. You'll be able to complete that and that will uh, uh, have you in the uh, registration for the next uh, webinar. Andrew, thank you very much for joining us once again. It's, it's always a pleasure Peter? to have you in these uh, discussions. And uh, I think we were both uplifted today, weren't we, listening to those comments? We were. And I, thank you for inviting me to listen to Adam Hale. Uh, what they've done is, is, to me, a new business model. It's the way of the future, and it can allow... Um, the accounting profession to do higher level work with small business clients that's more rewarding for them it's more rewarding for the clients um, and be paid properly for so doing uh, you know how can we attract and retain great people um, I think what Adam's talked about is an example of uh, what the future holds so thank you I okay. really enjoyed it thanks Andrew thank you very much Pete Goodbye. see ya bye-bye